Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my Learn to Program series. This time we're going to finish up regular expressions. We're going to cover OR group. We're going to cover some match object functions that we haven't covered so far, named groups. And in this part of the tutorial, we're going to have a bunch of problems for you to solve to make sure you understand regular expressions. If you haven't watched any of the previous parts of the tutorial, I provide a link above to the beginning of the regular expressions tutorial. And of course, if you haven't watched any of the regular Learn to Program series, watch those as well. All of the code is available in the description along with a transcript, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is everything we have learned so far. You've probably heard regular expressions are so complicated. Well, right here I have pretty much everything we have learned all right here in this one little bunch. And of course you could pause your screen and write this down, or you could go and click on the description and download the entire cheat sheet, but you can see everything here. I just wanted to show it to you so that you can see that regular expressions are really not all that complicated. All right, so now we're gonna jump over and talk about the OR conditional. All right, so now what we're gonna be able to do is use this guy right here. We call this the OR or the pipe or a whole bunch of other different things. It's over on the right-hand side of your keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to define the different matches that you will accept. So let's say we have random string is equal to, and then inside of there we have a number, and then we have dog, and then we have cat, and then we have turtle. Now let's say we just wanted to be able to grab the cat, dog and cat out of this guy. How could we do that? Well, let's create a regular expression and compile that. And of course, you probably know that we should come in here and type in backslash D because we want to target the numbers. And then also we want to target the period inside of there. And then on top of that, we want a space. But how specifically do we come in here and target either dog or cat? Well, inside of parentheses, you would just put dog or cat right like that. That's how simple it is and you can do that for any numerous different types of things and you can put different types of regular expressions in there. They don't just have to be just basic strings. And then we can come in and we can find all of our matches that we have here so far. So regular expression and the random string that we're going to be searching for. And then we can go and print this out. Matches and then print and I. And there you can see dog and cat popped up over there. So pretty easy stuff. And I'm going to be doing some more examples here using or. But now I want to jump in and cover a problem. All right, so for the problem, what I want you to do is create a regular expression that is going to match for five digit zip codes or zip codes with five digits, a dash, and then four digits. So in this situation, this will be valid and this will be valid. However, this will not be valid and neither will this be valid. So you have all the knowledge that you need to be able to complete this. So pause the video and try to create it. Otherwise, I'm going to create it for you right now. All right, so we're going to be using the OR inside of here. And what we want to do is we want to target any digits that are five in length. So that's what we're going to do for that. Then we're going to put a dash and then another series of digits that are going to be four in length like that. Or we're going to come in and target just the number of digits with five. And then at the end of this, we can throw a backslash S inside of it. And let's surround everything that we have here with parentheses. And if we run this guy, boom. You're going to see that it disregarded these two right here that are incorrect, and it grabbed these two which were correct. So hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, that's okay, but you probably should at this point after four videos on regular expressions. But either way, we're going to jump in and now talk about group. All right, so we're going to be able to use group to retrieve parts of regular expression matches. So let's say we had something like birthday, and we asked the user to enter your birthday, and then we tell them we want it to be month, day, and year with the little dashes in between there. And now we want to go in and grab those individual pieces. So what we want to do is I'm going to do birthday, regular expression is going to be equal to, and we could call search in this situation. And then inside of this, what we're going to do is we'll put our D like that, and we expect this to be two in length. 
and the parentheses are very important here so make sure you have the parentheses around it like that we're then going to have a dash and then we're going to go backslash d and we're going to put one to two in length for that actually we should put one to two for the month as well and the parentheses of course and then another dash and then we're going to come in and also get the year so let's go like this and we're going to make that mandatory for and if you just want to come in here like this and do that like that that's perfectly fine as well then after we get outside of this we're just going to go bd for our birthday and now what we're going to be able to do is grab this information in groups so if you come in here and you say you were born on and you wanted to grab the entire thing you would go bd regular expression and group like that and likewise in a similar fashion if you wanted to grab each of the individual pieces of data you could say something like birth month and then change this to one because this is going to be the first match inside of there you could also do birth day and change that to two for the second one and then you could say birth year and change that to the third and if you run this guy it's going to say that it wants you to enter in your birthday and you could do something like 1-1-1990 and it's going to come back you were born on 1-1-1990 and there's the birth month birthday birth year and you could do that for any of the other different options that you have available so there is another way for us to group and dissect regular expression matches and now let's jump over and talk about some match object functions that we haven't covered so far. All right, so there's going to be some functions that are going to provide more information on your matches. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say match is equal to re search, and we're going to keep this nice and simple. Let's just do backslash d and say we're looking for a two-digit number in the regular expression, and we'll just say something like the chicken weighed 13 pounds. Now what we're going to be able to do is print the match out onto the screen. So we can just go print and match. And if you want to print out what matched that specific regular expression, you're going to use group once again. And that's going to get that just like group got the answer for you previously. We're also going to be able to print the start and ending index of a match. And to do that, you use a guy called span and you just type in span here instead. You can also get the starting index, so start, and how you get that is just by typing in start, and you could also get the ending index, and how you do that is just come in here and say end, and if we run it, you're going to see indeed that it works. So it goes in there and it gets the match for 13 for that two digits we were looking for. It's also going to give us the span with the starting and the ending index and then you can get those individually. There's a couple other different little functions we're going to be able to use and now I'm going to talk about named groups. Now you're also going to be able to assign specific names to your matches. So once again let's come in We'll just keep it simple and we'll go random string in this situation and we'll say December 21 1974 and let's say I want to grab the month the day and the year out of here and let's assign it to what's called a named group so we'll go regular expression is equal to and we'll do raw string and we'll say we're going to get the beginning of this string and then we want to come in here and do a name group and you just put a question mark followed by a P and then inside of these brackets you type in whatever you want the name to be so I'll say month and I'll say that there is one or more of those guys inside of there close off the parentheses and then I'm gonna follow that up with a space and then for the next one do a question mark and P just like you did before here we'll call this day and we'll say this is going to be digits and that's gonna be one or more digits close that off and then there's gonna be another space and then we're going to have another P and inside of the brackets we'll type in year and we'll say digits and that's going to be one or more and then close off the parentheses. We can then come in and say matches is equal to RE search pass in our regular expression and the string that we want to search for and then if we want to print out the specific things by name we can say month and then we'll go matches followed by group and then inside of here we'll say month because that's what we want and group and then of course we're going to do the same things for the other different results so for the next one we can say day and just change that to day and year 
and change that to year and run it and you can see it comes out exactly as you would think it would. So another useful thing to do because this makes the regular expression a little bit easier to work with and that is named groups. So now we're going to jump over and cover a couple more problems. Alright, so for our first problem what I want you to do is I want you to be able to find the following legitimate email addresses. So you're going to have to look at exactly what we have here. This is a legitimate email address. This is a legitimate email address. And yes, indeed, this is a legitimate email address. So what you're going to have to do is create a regular expression that's going to be able to grab all of these different email addresses and then output them on the screen. So go ahead and pause your screen. Otherwise, I'm going to create it for you right now. So I'm going to walk you through the process here and there is multiple different ways to grab email addresses this is just one of them so I'm gonna say I want this to be a raw string and then what do I want inside of there we'll just look at what is asked for so you can see that there are letters in there and also there are uppercase letters so we're gonna do that you can also see that there's a chance that there could be a number inside of there so we're gonna cover that you're also gonna see that there are underscores inside of there and dots and pluses and minuses and that pretty much covers everything so then what are you gonna say well you're gonna say that you want one or more of what precedes that so put that in there then of course you're gonna have an at sign and then you're gonna have the second part so we're gonna go A through Z a through Z for uppercase and then you're gonna say 0 through 9 for the numbers and then you're also gonna allow for dashes and what do you want you want one or more of those guys you're then going to have a period so backslash dot and for the final part here the domain extension we're gonna say A through Z capital A through uppercase Z 0 through 9 and then a dash and then also a dot and you're gonna say that you want one or more of those so there is your regular expression. Not that hard. You just have to walk through the process and just word it out to yourself. So we're going to say find all, pass in regular expression, pass in the random string. And then if we want to print it out, do that and print I and run it. And you're going to see that it was able to match for all three of those different email addresses. So hopefully that wasn't too hard. And now I'm going to give you a little bit more complicated of a problem. Okay, so this time what I want you to do is to match for all of these different types of telephone numbers. And you can see that there is a wide variety of them here. And to do so, all you're going to have to do is just say what things have to be there and what things could be there. Very, very important. So take a second and try that out. Otherwise, I'm going to create it here right now. All right, so here's going to be our regular expression. This one's going to be a little bit longer than our previous things. So I'm going to walk through the process. I'm going to go call compile, raw string. All right, so what's the very first thing we could have here? Well, first off, we want to be able to create sub expressions, but we also want to be able to get our final result. So that means there's going to be parentheses around all of this. So that's the very first thing you want to do. Then the next thing, there is the potential, or the pro potential, sorry about that, of having a one at the very beginning, but it is not needed. So in this situation, inside of the sub-expression, we're going to put a one and a question mark. So that's going to cover that situation. Then what do we potentially have? Well, we potentially could have a dash inside of here, otherwise, or we could have a space inside of here, or we could have neither. And there, that handles that situation. Put another parentheses inside of there. And let's go and just for now anyway, put spaces inside of here so we can see a little bit better what we're trying to do. Next thing we're going to have is potentially we could have a parentheses inside of there. So we're going to put inside of a sub-expression, backslash, opening parentheses. And then we're going to close, not the parentheses off, but the sub-expression. And then after that, we're going to put a question mark because we don't know if that's going to be there or not. Then once again, we have the different digits. So we're gonna have three digits inside here. That's gonna be mandatory, so put that like that. Close off that parentheses. And then we are potentially going to have a closing parentheses, but we don't know if we're gonna have that or not. We're also potentially gonna have a couple other different things as well. So we could say or, and we could have a dash inside of there, or we could have a space inside of there, or, we could have a closing bracket and then a dash or 
a closing bracket. And then after we have that all defined, we're going to have our question mark because we don't know if we're going to have any of those guys inside of there or not. Then after that, we're going to definitely have three digits. So let's put that inside of there. Close off that sub expression. And now potentially we could have another dash or a space. So we're going to come in here like that. We're going to put a dash or a space. Close that off, question mark. And then we are definitely going to have four digits. This is going to be or and four digits. And then get rid of this, bring these back together. And it's saying that I have an unmatched parentheses here. So let's look and see what I may have slipped up on here. Ah, this guy right here, I was looking for the closing parentheses. So let's backslash that, and my error went away. And now let's test to see if I got this right. So I'm going to say match is is equal to, and do a find all on that with my regular expression, and random string, and then for i in matches. And it's going to give me all the sub expressions. I'm just going to look at that here in a second, but then I'm going to change it so that I just get the telephone numbers, and we'll run it. And it looks like everything came out great, except in this situation we have spaces here and we also don't want all these other sub expressions. We just want the very first one. So we're gonna come in and change this just slightly. We're gonna say print i, and I just want the very first index inside of there. And then on top of that, I want to strip off the trailing or the left white space and run it. And there you can see that I was able to match. There are six numbers, and we have up here one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So there you go, guys. I hope you got that right, and hopefully you have a great grasp on regular expressions and how you can use them. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section below. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover SQL Lite or working with databases. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.